Hey, everybody, and welcome. We are super excited today on our show. We're going to be talking about self-esteem. We have a beautiful guest who's going to join us today. Her name is Nakia Smith. She is the CEO and founder of Hearts Full of Grace. I'm Danita Hayes. And I'm Chola Owens. And welcome to Women Nation. Let's go. Let's get started. We all need to be encouraged in this world that's in the spin. We all need some positivity. That's why I always tune in to Women Nation. Women Nation. Women Nation. Women Nation. Ooh. Are you paying $1,000 or more for rent? Is your credit score 600? What are you doing? The Hayes Real Estate Team is here to make your dreams of home ownership come true. Hayes Real Estate Team made the process so easy. Yes, we purchased our first home using our VA loan with zero down and cash back at closing. And the Hayes Real Estate Team got my house under contract in less than 30 days. The Hayes Real Estate Team, all we do is make moves for you. Life is full of firsts, like buying your first home. The Hayes Real Estate Team is here to help, so you can focus on those other, more important firsts. The Hayes Real Estate Team. Women Nation. Ooh. Welcome back. We are here today, as we discussed earlier, with Miss Nakia Smith, and she is the CEO and founder of Hearts Full of Grace. Um, today's topic, we're going to be talking about self-esteem. And so before we get into it, though, Nakia, just give us a little bit of information and tell us about your organization. Well, thank you for having me. Um, Hearts Full of Grace is a nonprofit organization. It was established in 2009. I like to refer to it as my fifth child. Okay. Because um, <laughs> it was a delivery process. Mm -hmm. And as you know, that process can sometimes be painful. And so the process that was required to birth Hearts Full of Grace came out of tragedy. And so it was the way that I was to turn my tragedy into a triumph. Oh, and wow. so in 2009, I got a phone call very late in the night. Actually, the call came from my mother. And my mother called to inform me that um, the man I had planned to spend the rest of my life with, um, the man I had planned to help me raise my children with, um, had been murdered. And so I had to cope with the loss of someone who I loved very much. I had to cope with the loss of someone who I considered to be my closest friend. And then I had to cope with telling his children and his three sons mm -hmm. and my daughter, whom he helped me to raise, that he would not be returning home. Mm -hmm. And not only would he not be returning home, but that he was murdered. So that was a very challenging moment in my life. And for about a month, I remained in my house. I was shut off. I was isolated. I was in depression. I recognize now that I was depressed and I was stricken with grief. And I decided that it would have been best for me to go back to work. So on my way to work, after being in the house for a month, I mean, I was at a place where I couldn't take care of my children. I really wasn't taking care of myself, but I knew I needed to get out of the house because I felt like being in the house was only going to magnify the pain that I was experiencing. Mm -hmm. So on my way to work, I began to cry. And in that month that I had been suffering with the grief, I had not even taken the time to pray. Mm -hmm. And that was something so uncharacteristic of myself, yeah. but I just found my place, myself, excuse me, in the deepest and darkest place that I'd ever been in in my life. And I, I did not talk to God about it. Wow. I just allowed myself to be swallowed up in my misery. But you know what? A lot of times when people go through <laughs> things like that, they can go either way. Mm -hmm. They Absolutely. can either go away, push God away. Absolutely. Or they can just run to him Absolutely. and seek him. Absolutely. So, so I pushed him away. I pushed him away initially. Mm -hmm. And then on my way to work, 
it I was overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. I was just overwhelmed. And the tears began to flow like they hadn't flowed down my face before. Mm -hmm. I, I was blinded by my tears. I, that's how wow. hard I was crying. Mm -hmm. I could not see the road. So I had to pull over. I know now it was designed that way. Yeah. You need to pull over, my child, because we need to talk. Yeah. And so, exactly, I pulled over, and on the side of the road, I just began talking to God, mm -hmm. and I prayed to him, and I asked him to save me. I asked him to heal my heart. I asked him to just abide in me and direct my life and reorganize my life. Every place I'm broken, God, I need you to fix me up. I need yeah. you to repair me. And I lifted my hands up on the side of the road, and I told God at that moment, I surrender. I surrender my entire life to you. And as I'm sitting in that car, and we're having this moment together, mm -hmm. he says to me that your healing will come from helping others. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I had no idea what that meant. Awesome. But at the time, I was a preschool teacher. So I go back into the classroom for the first time after it had been a month. And the theme happened to have been caring and sharing. And I said, well, how can I connect this theme with these children? Mm -hmm. And I said, OK, we're going to do a food drive. And we did a food drive for the month of November. And that drive grew to the point where we started with the canned goods and then we began to prepare sandwiches. We were getting calls in the classroom from other schools mm -hmm. asking if we had baskets that we could prepare for mm -hmm. families in the community. And so what started off as a lesson in the classroom, just that quickly, mm -hmm. yeah. just that quickly, he said, this is what I mean. Mm -hmm. Because I said, how, do, what do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. You know, just that quickly. I, you know, I go into my classroom and he showed me exactly what plan he had for my life. Mm -hmm. And so Hearts Full of Grace was formed out of a preschool classroom <laughs> doing a lesson plan on caring and sharing. That's awesome. Now, I know you had said that you, you know, you realized that you were depressed. What were some of the things, you know, a lot of us, we go through things and we just keep telling ourselves we're all right because we can get up in the morning mm -hmm. and we can continue going about our day. What do you feel was um, your breaking point, or what do you feel was a, a sign, a calling out as far as depression? What do you consider made you depressed? Mm -hmm. I didn't want to get up. Mm -hmm. I had no desire mm -hmm. to take care of myself. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that goes yeah. when we're going Appearance. through. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And we don't care about self-maintenance at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. So I didn't care about myself. I didn't care about the four people that meant the most to me, my mm -hmm. children. You know, and I won't say I didn't care about them, but I lost the it's ability. Yeah, I lost the ability mm -hmm. to take care of them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so I didn't want to get out of my bed. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't want to do anything. And I'll be honest with you, the night I found out he'd been murdered, I didn't want to live. Wow. I was at the hospital. Mm -hmm. I was crouched over. I was crying because I felt like at that moment, the easiest thing to do was would be to... Out. To just not be here. It would be, you know, it would be easier than to have to figure out how I'm going to move forward. Mm -hmm. And so after the grief, then the fear follows. Mm -hmm. Because I'm afraid because so much of my life and our life had been dependent upon him. He yeah. took care of the bills. He, you know, he took care of things. I hadn't even been working for years mm -hmm. before he was murdered. So, so now I have to yeah, absolutely have to start to a whole new platform of things you had how did the kids you know take it you know my children did extremely well they did better than I did mm -hmm. and I will I will be honest my oldest son was four mm -hmm. I have a set of twins they were two mm -hmm. so they didn't completely understand mm -hmm. what it meant mm -hmm. to lose their father but they recognized that there were some things that were different Mm -hmm. All right, guys, so we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to go ahead and dive deep into our subject today, which is self-esteem. And again, we're going to come back with Ms. Nakia Smith. First-time home buyers, it's time. The Hayes Real Estate Team partners with certified credit professionals to make your home ownership dreams come true. To make your move, contact us today. The Hayes Real Estate Team. 
Are you paying $1,000 or more for rent? Is your credit score 600? What are you doing? The Hayes Real Estate Team is here to make your dreams of home ownership come true. Hayes Real Estate Team made the process so easy. Yes, we purchased our first home using our VA loan with zero down and cash back at closing. And the Hayes Real Estate Team got my house under contract in less than 30 days. The Hayes Real Estate Team, all we do is make moves for you. Life is full of firsts, like buying your first home. The Hayes Real Estate Team is here to help, so you can focus on those other, more important firsts. The Hayes Real Estate Team. Women Nation. Ooh. Hey guys, we wanted to take the opportunity just to show you a little bit of the footage that we got over the weekend. Chola and I had the opportunity to attend the Ben Dope Fashion yes, Experience, yes. and it was amazing. It was. It really was. It really yeah, was. so what are you wearing today? Because you look super cute. I have on Miss Rockwell's Rex as usual. Well, <laughs> you should already know it. And yes. you know, Miss Lauren, I'm hooked me up with my wigs, honey. I love my wigs. Yes, yes. Yes. And how about you? Again, I'm wearing Miss Rockwell Rex as well. The pink pants, the black shirt. I mean, she's just she hooked me up. She is. And of course, Miss Lauren, she did my hair, gave me a little bit of uh, layers. Mm. So I'm excited. Great. Beautiful. Yes. yes. And we, we definitely went to that fashion show because uh, Mrs. Rockwell, she is our stylist. Yes. And she styles us all the beautiful outfits you see, all the risk we take with our outfits. She's the person who pushes us over that ledge. Trust me. Yeah. Some of those outfits, we like, huh? <laughs> yeah. And, but, but she makes us do it. And it, it turns out absolutely wonderful. Yeah. So this was an awesome experience just to see her put on her first big fashion show. And when I say that thing was dope, honey, it mm. was. It, it was. was. Yeah, you it guys was. have got to see some of the beautiful fashions um, nice. that the girls were um, modeling this weekend. It was amazing. Yeah. She had girls from every size, it's from me being all skinny to my BBWs. Mm -hmm. Hey, she had everybody represented well. Yes. Okay. Oh, let's not forget Miss Crystal Diggs. She was also yes. her business partner and she is part of that team. So it's a team effort. We were just highlighting uh, Miss Rockwell because she is our stylist yep. on set. But Crystal Diggs, you did an awesome job as well. Yes. So salute to you. Thank you. I can't wait to see what you guys do come this October. So if November. we had to rate the event, we would give it a what? I, I would give it a 10. I give it a off the charts. Off <laughs> through the roof. Yeah, it it's was on classy. Fire. Mm -hmm. um, they had a DJ, um, yeah. food, drinks. It was just mm -hmm. a nice event. Very and that nice. was a good selling point. That food and drinks was a cuz. <laughs> Honey, I had my and my <laughs> meatballs and I was good. It's like, yes, well, it down that runway. So I just, the whole setup was beautiful. The the decor was beautiful. We, they had a lot of media there. Yes. They had a lot of vendors. And everybody was coming in there with some nice fashions. Yes. They were trying to kill Well, it. guess what? We were looking good, oh, too, we was, now. Oh, you already know we was. We were looking real mm, good. Shutting down. <laughs> I had somebody ask me, was I the stylist? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm not my quail. But, you know, I do put myself together. Oh, my yeah, Miss Raquel, she had us looking amazing. She did. So. She always does. Always does. Yes. So not only did we see a lot of amazing fashions, but we also got a chance to witness the TRK band, and they were amazing. Guys, they sung so beautifully. Um, they were just awesome. So check it out, guys. We hope you enjoy. I'm Ziana. I'm 12. Yeah, really? Three songs. Wow. I'm Imani. I'm 16. Oh my gosh. She's they are beautiful and handsome. My name is Kayvana. I'm 16 years old. I'm Simeon and I'm 14. Awesome. Wow. Awesome. So tell me, y'all, for you guys to be so young, where did you get those strong vocal cords from? <laughs> they always say this story. They always say they got it from me. That's not really happening. They all have their own individual voices. I just really helped to cultivate the voices because I was the first one to be. No, that's right. Actually, it was a funny story because when I was younger, I couldn't sing that one thing. I used to sound like chicken scratch. She was the only one who could sing, and he followed up behind her. Then she taught her, and then I just, I guess I just joined in later. So. 
That's awesome. Yeah, so we definitely enjoyed having you and hearing you guys sing. We're definitely going to follow you guys and find out what's going on and keep up with you. Definitely wish you guys success and hopefully, prayerfully, you know what Absolutely. I'm going to go ahead and claim it. Well, listen, yes. y'all, make sure y'all check out the TRK Band. Hit them up on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and make sure you come out to their next performances. Absolutely. See you Thank you, later. guys. Yes. Life is full of firsts, like buying your first home. The Hayes Real Estate team is here to help, so you can focus on those other, more important firsts. The Hayes Real Estate team. First time home buyers, it's time. The Hayes Real Estate team partners with certified credit professionals to make your home ownership dreams come true. To make your move, contact us today. The Hayes Real Estate team. Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed that behind the scenes footage of the Ben Dope fashion experience. And how befitting because we're talking about self esteem today. So, those mm -hmm. ladies showcased their outer beauty, and today we're going to talk about inner beauty. Yes. So, we're right back here with our guest, Miss Nikia Smith. Thank you so much for joining us today. So, let's just get right into it. Nikia, why do you think so many women uh, suffer from low self-esteem? What do you think the issue is? I think in my experience personally mm -hmm. and dealing with women who I've come in contact with, who I have the opportunity to minister to, I think it kind of falls in about three different categories. I think generational iniquities is one. Mm -hmm. I believe that our tendency to compare ourselves to other women mm -hmm. is another one. And I feel like our inability to resolve conflicts from the past, including traumatic experiences in our lives. And so we carry them with us yeah. and we project them on to our children. Mm -hmm. We project them on to the people that we are around. And if we don't find the healing and the resolution, then we, we struggle with mm -hmm. our self-esteem. Mm -hmm. So how did you, how were you able to come up from your adversities you know as a child some of the things that you had to go through and now look at you you're like a blossoming flower <laughs> yes. you know building God's kingdom doing mm -hmm. kingdom work you know some women can't seem to get from that past place or that down place or they mm -hmm. let that down place define Absolutely. who they are how were you able to move past you know the things that maybe you had to go through as Absolutely. a child to get to where you are today right. Well, I had to recognize those issues that I that I had within myself, and when I went through that moment, um, my very difficult moment that I had to overcome, and when I called out to God, it was a part of a healing process. It was a journey that He just took me on, mm -hmm. and the first thing I had to do is bear my soul to Him, mm -hmm. and I had to come to grips with the things that I tried to hide behind mm -hmm. the mask that I had become accustomed mm -hmm. to wearing. I, now I'm back at work, I've got to wear a mask because mm -hmm. I, I've got to keep going. I've, mm -hmm. I've got to make people think that I'm okay. Yeah. When really I was not, when I was really broken and really you could almost see the pieces mm -hmm. of my soul just kind of laying around wherever I traveled. And so I had to bear my heart to him. And it meant going all the way back, you know, to when I was a child and some of the issues that um, I developed from childhood. Mm -hmm. You know, I suffered into adulthood with feeling rejected. Mm -hmm. um, I suffered into adulthood with feeling as if I wasn't adequate enough because I didn't have my father in my life. Mm -hmm. And so I looked for that love validation. in places, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I looked for that love, I looked for that validation. Mm -hmm. And I struggled sometimes in the absence of, of having that. Um, there were some things that occurred as a child that I had absolutely no control over, mm -hmm. but I blamed myself. So I struggled with the shame mm -hmm. of acknowledging that these things had happened to me mm -hmm. and I carried that burden, but it wasn't my burden to bear because I had no fault in it. So I had to say, these are all of the issues I'm bringing to you, God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had to repent. And I went on a spiritual journey 
So the first thing I had to do was I had to repent. I had to repent for unforgiveness that was in my heart. Mm -hmm. I had to repent for resentment that mm -hmm. was in my heart. I had to repent for anger that was in my heart. I set out and deliberately apologized to people whom I knew I'd hurt. Mm -hmm. I knew I hurt you. Mm -hmm. I, I knew I did something to offend you. So I deliberately sought them out mm -hmm. and apologized to them. I repented to God for everything I'd done mm -hmm. that I knew I'd done wrong and everything that I may not have been aware of doing wrong. And um, once I did those things, he just started opening the doors mm -hmm. and putting people in my life to say, okay, this is the next step. So I severed soul ties. Mm -hmm. I did a prayer yeah. and I did that prayer one night. And when mm -hmm. I tell you that night when I went to sleep, I literally saw spirits leaving my body. Wow. I literally mm -hmm. saw, and I woke up with a spirit of just being refreshed. Wow. I did not feel the same when I got up. I felt so different. I felt like a weight had been lifted mm -hmm. and coupled that with fasting and praying mm -hmm. and being willing to do whatever he said to do. Just saying, I trust mm -hmm. you. I trust you so totally that whatever direction you send me in, I won't question you. I'll do whatever you tell me to do. And that saved my life. And that gave me the healing I needed to be a mother to my four children mm -hmm. and to my daughter, who I did not want mm -hmm. to struggle with the same generational Absolutely. curses that I struggled with. Absolutely. I will not project those things That's to you. That's awesome. Yes. That's so to awesome. God be the glory. I Praise thank you God. for sharing your story with us and thank you. letting us know. It's a lot of um, mothers out there who have lost uh, the other half of them to violence, to being murdered. Absolutely. And your story is going to definitely be able to help them get through that. We, we're losing a lot of men in these streets. Yeah. So um, thank you. Thank you for having for me. For sharing it with us. Thank you for allowing me to open yes. up and be transparent. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just feel like I think that this is really going to help someone mm -hmm. um, be set free. Yep. Um, because like we talked about earlier, a lot of women compare themselves to other people and they value themselves mm -hmm. or... Uh, validate their self-worth about Absolutely. with what they see around them Absolutely. and you know we're all fearfully and wonderfully made you know none of us were made by accident we were Absolutely. all put here intentionally by God and we That's all right. have a specific role and a specific purpose yeah. I can't do what Nakia do <laughs> she can't do what Danita do yeah, I can't no, do what Chola right. does and Chola can't do <laughs> what I do Absolutely. and that's okay that's, 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 that's right. how it should be God put us all here for a specific reason yeah. so we just have to be intentional about getting to know our creator mm -hmm. so that he can tell us who we are that's mm -hmm. right yeah and that's that's pretty much the biggest thing with self-esteem once that you is. know who you are mm -hmm. then you have that's right high self-esteem absolutely you can't allow people to define who you are absolutely yeah, so I really appreciate you coming yes, here today you. and telling us your story. Thank you. I know it's going to help some people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I believe it will also. Yeah. Talk, talk about a little bit about your um, nonprofit oh, okay. and what it's about in case okay. anybody needs. <laughs> My fifth baby. Okay, so uh, Hearts Full of Grace is, is designed to focus on four components. Service, education, mm -hmm. empowerment, and development. Um, we're pretty well known for the service aspect. Um, that's when we go out and we have a feeding ministry. Mm -hmm. And we feed in Norfolk and we feed in Virginia Beach. There's a very popular place in Norfolk that we call The Wall. Mm -hmm. And we've actually been going to The Wall for four years. But we've been feeding for about eight. Um, education, we have some kindergarten readiness programs. Mm -hmm. um, empowerment, we have some workshops for women. Okay. Development, we have a youth development program that's actually going to be kicking off August the 14th. And it's called the Yes impact youth engaged awesome. in service and social development okay so awesome. we, we got to wrap it up but tell us how can we get in touch with yes, you please. okay so you can reach out to me by you can call me on my telephone i have no problems with that that's 757-375-8805 i just I just toss it around. Call yeah. me, call That's me. That's for donations. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. I'm newly engaged, so that is not going to work. Uh, come on. <laughs> and then you can um, reach out to me via Facebook, mm -hmm. and it's at Hearts Full of Grace. And you can go to our web page as well, okay. which is heartsfullofgrace.org. Yes. All right. Well, awesome. thank you so much, Nikita. Thank you for having me. So when we come back, we will have our final words of wisdom. Yes, Yay. Yes. 
Are you paying $1,000 or more for rent? Is your credit score 600? What are you doing? The Hayes Real Estate Team is here to make your dreams of home ownership come true. Hayes Real Estate Team made the process so easy. Yes, we purchased our first home using our VA loan with zero down and cash back at closing. And the Hayes Real Estate Team got my house under contract in less than 30 days. The Hayes Real Estate Team, all we do is make moves for you. And welcome back. We really hope you enjoyed that interview with Nakia Smith. And now it is time for our final words of wisdom. Yes. So as you guys know, today was our topic was self-esteem. Inner beauty will always outlive outer beauty. As we get older, our looks will fade. As much as we work on making ourselves look good on the outside, it's so important to make sure that we work on the inside as well. God was intentional when he created us. And so we should be intentional about getting to know him. When you get to know him in that time, you're going to get to know who you are. One of the things I want to definitely tell you today is don't compare yourself with other people. You were fearfully and wonderfully made. God put you here for a specific purpose made just for you, not for anybody else but you. Don't compare yourself to other people. Do what it is that God has called you to do. My final words of wisdom, when I was 190 pounds, I wanted to be 130. When I got to 130, I felt like a little boy. So it really doesn't matter. If your mental isn't strong enough, nothing on the outside is going to matter. Your self-image has to be strong with inside before anything can project, project outside. You, I know some of the most beautiful women who are 300 plus, and you know why they're beautiful? Because their personality outshines anything else. You know a couple of them because they married with kids. Why you pretty sitting there with none, no husband. So it's all about image. It's not about what you project. He's going to love what you have in here. Mm -hmm. All of this is going to disappear. So make sure that when you're thinking about your image, you think of what's in here and what's in here and leave all of this for them to judge. It's not up to them. It's up to God in the end. He don't care what you look like. But he sees your heart. And he'll make you ugly. Keep on. (laughs) <laughs> five seconds whole pretty face been done oh my goodness it's the truth well listen y'all thank you so much for tuning in and we will definitely see you next week we yes. hope that uh, this show has really enlightened and helped someone to break free just break the chains and know that it's not about what's on the outside but it's about what's on the inside and if you work on the inside that inside is going to exude to the outside yes it is thanks again and god bless yes because i miss my hips (laughs) we'll see y'all next week we'll go find my hips we all need some positivity that's why i always tune in to women